Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at a new feature in Lightroom called Smart Previews. Now, Smart Previews can be super handy when you know that you're going to be working with files that are offline. And by offline, I mean you're going to be working with files that aren't local to your computer. Maybe they're on an external drive, and you won't have that external drive with you. So let's take a look at when this would be an advantage. So what I should start with is just showing you that on this computer I have an internal drive, and we can see it right here. This is the Macintosh hard drive. But I also have an external drive attached, and that external drive right here is called AUX. And I've actually imported some images from that external drive into Lightroom. So Lightroom's aware of these files that actually are living or stored on this external drive. Now, as long as that external drive is connected, I can do whatever I want with these images, right? So I could give it a two-star rating, we could change the keyword, I could move over to the develop module and maybe bump the clarity a little bit. But if we go back to the grid view, we know that the reason that I can do this is because all of these files are online. They're accessible right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to the finder here, and I'm just going to eject this external drive. And as soon as I eject that drive and we return back to Lightroom, you can see that that drive is actually grayed out because it's no longer attached. And in fact, we've got question marks next to the two folders here. And in fact, we've also got exclamation marks telling me that those photos are missing. So although I could still go in and maybe change a star rating and change my keywords, what I cannot do is I can't go to the develop module and actually make any changes. You can see that the panels are all grayed out. And that's because in previous versions there wasn't a way to work with those offline files. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to plug back in that external drive and we'll return back to the library module and as soon as that drive spins up, Lightroom will automatically see it, and then it will light up this drive. As we can see right there, it now has a green light, and we've gotten rid of the question marks as well as the explanation marks. So what I'm going to do before taking that drive offline is I'm simply going to select the images here, and I'm going to create smart previews. Now you can do that by going to the library menu, and then going to previews, and build smart previews. Or there's an easier way, right over here underneath the histogram, I've actually got 12 images selected and I have 12 originals, but I don't have any smart previews associated with them. So I'll click that and Lightroom's going to ask me if I want to build the 12 smart previews. Yes, I want to go ahead and do this, and we can see that I've got a status bar where Lightroom is going to build those smart previews. So once these smart previews are built and are stored, let's go ahead and click OK, I can now take this drive offline again. So we'll do that here. I'll simply eject it again like I did a moment ago. We can see that when I return back to Lightroom, sure enough, the drive has been grayed out, so it's not attached. We've got the question marks, but this time, instead of the explanation mark, we've got a little icon here for a smart preview. And with these images selected, instead of the first option, which was photos without smart previews, I now have 12 smart previews, right? I don't have any originals plus smart previews because the originals are offline right now. So now I can go over to the develop module and you can see I can continue editing. So for example, I could change the clarity again. And I know that I'm working with a smart preview because up here at the top next to where it says histogram, it actually tells me that I'm working on this smart preview. So I think you can see if you are one of the people that need to work on your images, but you can't always have those images accessible, sometimes they're going to be offline, then smart previews can really save the day. All right, let's go back to the grid view for a moment. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in that drive again, just to show you that once that drive comes up, spins up, and we can see it here, there's actually nothing that I need to do. Lightroom's smart enough to know that that smart preview had been updated, and it's just going to update the original as soon as that original comes online. So there's nothing that you even need to do. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what's happening in the background.
I'm going to go underneath the Lightroom menu here and I'm going to go to Catalog Settings. On Windows you'd go underneath the Edit menu. And you can see here that under General, we have the location of our catalog. Well, if I click the Show button here, then Lightroom will automatically take me to the location of my catalog. And if we just make this a little bit larger and stretch this out, you can see that along with my catalog, I have the previews file like I always had before. Those are just the previews, the normal previews that we use in the library. And we can see that I have my Lightroom catalog. So that's the LR cat file. But now I also have a smart previews file. That's the LR data file. So that's what Lightroom is creating in order to store all of these smart previews. Now a little bit more information just on what these previews are. These smart previews, they're actually lossy DNG files that we're saving. That's the information that we're saving inside of this LR data file for the smart previews. And they're 2,540 pixels on the long side. They are compressed and they have actually been resized, which of course we need to do because if we weren't resizing them, then basically this previews um, LR data file would just become enormous. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the other ways that you can actually create smart previews in Lightroom. So I'll go back to Lightroom here and we'll close this. You should just know that when you click import, there's an option over here on the right hand side so you can actually build smart previews as you import. So let's say you weren't importing to a local drive but you were importing to an external drive. If you know that you're going to take that drive offline and you still want to work with those images in the develop module, you'll want to make or build these smart previews. In addition, if we have a bunch of legacy files, meaning files that we've already imported and Lightroom is aware of, we can simply go into the library menu, we can go to previews, and we can build our smart previews. I do also just want to mention that you can also discard your smart previews if you know, for example, that you won't need them any longer. Okay, so let me just eject this drive uh, one more time here because I do want to show you when it is offline, I have some additional capabilities as well. So it's not just the ability to work in the develop module, I can also export these files. But there are a few limitations. Remember these, these smart previews are smaller than the originals. So you'll want to make sure that when you export for the highest quality, you'll want to make sure that this long edge here doesn't go above 2540. So this is really something you could just do in a pinch. Like if you've taken your smart previews with you because maybe you're going to go on location and someone asks you to email them an image that you don't have online, you could use this smart preview and export a file for them. So again, it's not optimal because you don't actually have the original, but you can use that smart preview, which of course is compressed, but you could use that in a pinch. In addition, you could use a smart preview down here in your published services. For example, if I wanted to publish this image to Behance or Facebook or Flickr, more often than not, when I am sharing these online, I don't really need a huge file, so the smart preview would have plenty of information. The 2540 pixels across, that's plenty of information maybe to post my image to Behance or to Facebook. And finally, if I simply want to use Lightroom's capability to email a photo, again, even if the images are offline, as long as I have that smart preview built, we can go ahead and send these in an email, assuming that you're not going to want to send an image bigger than the smart preview. Now I'll go ahead and cancel out of here. Just one last thing before we wrap up. I do want to select this image and move over to the develop module for one moment. I'm going to zoom in and you can see here I'm zooming in one to one, but because this smart preview is a little bit smaller than the original, my one-to-one -one view isn't going to correspond directly to the one-to-one -one view that I would have if this image was online. So where this might affect me would be, for example, in the detail panel. So if I'm basing my sharpening on the smart preview, you should just keep in mind that you might want to go in and check that again once you've got your original files online because those two views don't line up one to one. Excellent, that wraps up this overview of smart previews in Lightroom 5. My name's Julianne Cost. Thanks for joining me.